Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first installment of what I'm calling Meet the Dojo. This is a little selfish on my part. I wanted to just gain a sense of the personalities behind a lot of the people I've been meeting online in the dojo, and I thought other people might be interested as well. So I'm just going to do a short interview with today. It's going to be Mitch, and we're just going to talk about who he is outside the chess world, and only at the very end are we going to get into it. Uh, so I'm going to let Mitch take over and just tell us where he was born and where he came up, a little bit about his family. And on the left there, we have a picture of young Mitch with, I guess, his three older sisters. Yeah, so I was born in Northeast Ohio, uh, North Canton. Uh, I have three older sisters, uh, Danielle being the oldest, who is seven years older than me. Uh, then Joni, who is five years older than me, and Miranda, who is two years older than me. Uh, the picture, we're all wearing our Colts jerseys because we grew up going to Colts football games in Indianapolis. Uh -huh. uh, my my dad was good friends with um, someone who owned one of the suites there. So I grew up going to to the to the Colts games um, and was a huge Peyton Manning fan. And uh -huh. now my cat's jumping up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so we gr grew up in Northeast Ohio. Um, I went to Hoover High School um there in northeast ohio um and of course played chess for the high school but we can get to that later um i graduated as salutatorian of hoover uh, and then went to drake university well cool let me ask you a couple questions so there's a great picture of you and your sisters um do you feel it informs who you are to be like this youngest sibling of in in a big family like that yeah, it definitely formed uh, who I am. Uh, my sisters really were a huge part of my upbringing, as well as, of course, my mother and my, my father. But my sisters were always playing school and had me as the student, and they were teaching me things. So uh, I grew up always eager to learn. Um, and uh, I believe that they helped shape my, my views of things. Uh, I think that they were very helpful in um hopefully forming me into a gentleman so <laughs> uh-huh okay um and i imagine you know one of the things that's interesting i think for people out there mitch is when you look, think about chess players in america it's generally not people who uh look like you i.e they're not from middle america right yeah. especially the ones that get really intense about it so uh, what about you uh, has led you to now becoming a chess player, taking it so seriously? Uh, so it's definitely because of my grandpa. Um, uh -huh. My grandpa taught me when I was five years old, uh, and he was very much into it. He very much was like, this is a family tradition. Uh, it, was, it was a bit different because it was like the men in the family play chess, so my sisters didn't uh -huh. really learn. But uh, he's, he taught me how they, the pieces move, uh, kind of taught me very basics. Um, and then it was a, a big deal for me when I finally beat my grandpa for the first time. Uh, and then that's when I started playing competitively in tournaments. Uh -huh. um, now, so it was around fifth grade. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, okay. No, I just, I just want to make sure we leave the chest for later, but that's interesting. And it, so it sounds like your, your family in general like has like one of these families has a push toward education. Mm -hmm. exactly right okay and now one of these great uh pictures in here i want to just highlight this is the graduation picture that we're looking at here um tell us about your your college then and, and yeah what did you do in college yeah so i went to drake university uh, in des moines iowa um so i went from ohio to iowa and uh, it's, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, I met who is now my wife. Uh, at, at that point, of course, no no clue. But I, I met her at summer orientation before school started. Uh huh. Uh, she we were randomly seated together at the like orientation dinner, and uh, later found out that she was in my uh, first year seminar, which was like a writing class. Uh, and she forgot who I was. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, we 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 were like walking and talking and then she brought up a story. I was like, yeah, you told me that before. And she was like, when I'm like at orientation dinner. And she's like, Oh, I forgot you. So, uh -huh. um, 
uh, of, of course, like we didn't start dating until later that year, but uh, I met her uh, at Drake. Um, she eventually actually changed schools, uh, transferred to Mercy College of Nursing. Uh-huh. Uh, since Drake didn't have a nursing program at the time. Um, and um, she originally was going to Drake for like uh, pharmacology uh, and then decided to do nursing instead. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I went to Drake uh, originally for actuarial science, uh, which is the job that I'm doing. I'm an actuary now. Um, but I made several changes to my major uh, while I was there. Uh, I started off as actuarial science, uh, political science, economics, and physics. Uh, right. Political science, I dropped like instantly. Um, <laughs> I, I was very interested in politics until I started learning about politics, and then I didn't want to learn about politics. So um, in this picture with graduation, you know, yeah, it's you had you had a quote you, you told me. You said, like, I got four degrees and 40 pounds heavier. Um, <laughs> and so it definitely seemed hugely transformative for you. I mean, you, you basically got married, and mm-hmm. you got all these degrees, and... I should say you're you're still a very young man. That's one of the things about you. What are you like? Twenty four now? Yeah, twenty four. About to yeah. turn twenty five in about a month. Yeah, so very young, very young. Um, and so just give us a picture. What is what? What do you do in your job with actuarial science? Uh, so I've worked for two different companies. I started off at USAA, uh, which is a auto insurance and property insurance. But I was in auto insurance. Uh-huh. Um mainly pricing uh, was what I was doing there. Um, so taking a lot of different risk factors and finding out how they impact uh, the the price of insurance. Right. Um, and now I'm in, I'm at Cigna and in health insurance. Um, and I am essentially transforming all of their Excel workbooks into code, um, into a different uh, program. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm taking and using uh, a programming language to program it into some software that they have um, okay, cool. to eliminate the need for the Excel documents and uh, raise the efficiency of it. And now we should say you moved very recently from Texas to the outskirts of St. Louis, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not in St. Louis, but I'm close enough that I, I'll say I'm in the, the greater St. Louis area, I guess. Uh-huh. Okay, let me just throw a couple more pictures in here. Um, there I have you with your extended family. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is just like you have gone really deep on chess, especially, I'm just going to assume it's been especially intense for you this last year with COVID, right? Mm-hmm. So, you, you know, that's interesting to me in general. And there's a lot of people... Uh, in the dojo and outside the dojo who have now begun to take it very seriously and gotten very good at it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I wonder about is, you know, you don't have kids yet. And, you know, so you have this period in your life. Uh, What do your, does your wife and your family think about this obsession? Um, My wife, probably wishes I spent a little bit more time with her. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, she's very supportive of it, but uh, is also occasionally like, uh, you play too much chess. But right. um, at the same time, she's very supportive. Whenever I tell her I have a, a game for the evening, uh, she tends to just leave me be in the, the office here and um, wishes me good luck and all of that. And she'll talk to me about chess. Uh, uh-huh. she, doesn't very, she doesn't understand it very much. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm speaking... Uh, like Russian to her, but yeah. you know, she'll listen. So, <laughs> um, but she's very supportive of it. Uh, my, my parents and my sisters are, are very fascinated by it. Uh, I, again, they probably don't really understand what I'm saying, but uh, are interested to see how the progress goes. And uh, especially when my grandmother was still alive, was very interested in it. Um, she passed away earlier this year um, and her husband might, my grandpa, who he passed away when I was in high school, was the one who taught me. Um, so for her, it was always like um, hearing his legacy uh, whenever I talked about it. So um, she was always very interested in it. Right. So what's interesting is that your grandfather's 
interest in chess and giving it to you as a gift is mm-hmm. one of the things that gives it a, a pass within the family. Yeah. Right. It becomes part of the family culture. And uh, that's that. Well, that's really interesting to know. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to imagine that, and especially in this last uh, nine months or so, that, you know, you're working, I assume, a lot, but you're also, you're putting out a lot of energy, I can tell. I've seen mm-hmm. on chess, uh, I can see it on social media, I can see the games <laughs> you're playing, and the, just also just the progress you've made. Um, I should say, Mitch has a very deep opening repertoire for someone of his rating, when I say of his rating, we don't know really what Mitch's true strength is because, uh, you know, he really hasn't had a chance to play in a lot of tournaments uh, at this new level that he's at because, correct me if I'm wrong, I think your USCF is only around some like 1700 or something, right? Yeah, I think my USCF is like 1750, uh, but that's from, I've played one tournament in the past like two and a half years. I played in the 2019 uh, World Open, um, and I think I went from 1700 to 1750 with that tournament. Um, but other than that, like I, I just haven't been playing uh, over the board chess, and uh, it's mainly been due to where I've lived. Uh-huh. Um, when I was this past, uh, while well, I was in Texas, uh, a year and a half of that was in. Uh, New Braunfels, Texas, which is like directly between San Antonio and Austin. Right. Uh, and so all the tournaments were either in San Antonio or in Austin. And whenever they held them, they were usually like one game per week over the course of a month. And to drive over an hour, like it was like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes or so, right. uh, depending on which direction I went, um, once a week for a tournament was very difficult to convince my wife of. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, I really didn't play in those, um, while I was in San Antonio, I think I played in two tournaments. Um, I think one of them was, I only played like two rounds because I was taking an exam that month. So I only did the first two rounds and then dropped out of it. Um, so yeah, I, not, not a lot of over the board chess while I was in, in Texas, um, which has been the past two and a half years or so. So is my picture right then that it's really in the last year that you've amped it up with the COVID that that's really when it's happened? Yeah, I I think uh, I started amping it up right before the world open, but not nearly to the level of what I've been doing in COVID. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think probably once I started putting in a ton of time would have been like November or so October or November of 2019 so before COVID even started um was when I started really getting into like opening uh preparation uh doing a ton of time on chessable uh and then once COVID hit I just I was just like you know I I'm saving so much time not commuting to work I should put all that time into to to chess well, let me just offer a guess, and you can tell me if this is right, that it sounds like, you know, you were very focused in high school doing chess on the side, very focused in college doing chess on the side. Now you have this job, which maybe doesn't need you, need your mind when you're not working on it, and now mm-hmm. it's like, now is the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, and in college, like like we had said, I had four majors, so I pretty much didn't have free time. And when I did have free time, I unfortunately played League of Legends. Uh-huh. Um, so that really uh, took away from any chess uh, practice that I did. I played in occasional tournaments, but uh, really not a ton of focus on chess. Uh, I was all on school and then a little bit on the terrible League of Legends video yeah. game. Um, but yeah, once I graduated, um, I, I really wanted to put time into chess all of my free time. Uh, and my past job, I didn't have as much free time. Uh, I did a lot of overtime there, but Mm -hmm. yeah, as soon as I switched over to working for Cigna, um, pretty much if I'm not taking an exam, um, cause as, as an actuary, we have, we have a lot of professional exams that we have to take, Mm -hmm. um, to be fully credentialed and I'm still in that process. Uh, but while I'm not taking an exam, I'm just entirely focused on chess and during the, the, uh, pandemic now. I haven't taken any exams. Um, they were 
uh, the one I was supposed to take in April of, of this year got pushed back to July. And then Texas was like the worst, one of the worst places to be for COVID right. uh, in around that time. So I just didn't go to the exam because uh, I was terrified of getting the virus and giving it to my wife who works with um, in the NICU. So with oh, right. uh, uh-huh. immunocompromised babies. So her getting it is really bad. Uh, of course, now I actually have it. So uh, despite all of that, precautions um Wait, you, up getting... you, you you're, you're now you're now suffering from it right now or yeah i uh, we had a funeral that we went to uh-huh. um two weeks ago and unfortunately uh her parents had coronavirus at the time without knowing right um so it was uh spread to us and then uh so she hasn't been able to go to work uh right, right. and whatnot so um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I had it too. I had it so early though. We weren't getting tests at that time. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, before I ask you a little bit more about chess, I'm going to pull up this great picture of you uh, as a runner from back in the day. And I guess you're not running anymore, but what else is going on besides chess in your life? Uh, mainly now it's just chess. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I, need to get back into exercising more um the fitness of the body helps with fitness of the mind so i I really need to get back to it uh we have like an exercise bike that i occasionally use but i've been having a lot of sleep problems lately so it's made it kind of hard to wake up early to exercise but um we just now now that we're all moved in and whatnot we finally got a, a new doctor and i'm getting my sleep medication again um, so hopefully I'm able to catch back up on that to help huh, okay. uh, my routine so that I can exercise again. Um, uh, I haven't done running in a long time. Uh, is that essentially that one picture, uh, of me and, uh, my coworkers from Cigna, uh, that was during my, my internship, um, at Cigna back in 2017. Uh-huh. That's probably the last time I actually did any running. Um, and since then I've gained a lot of weight. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. So I, as, as you said, I, I, I joke, uh, I gained four degrees and 40 pounds in four years. Yeah. Uh, now it's been another, uh, almost three years since I graduated and I, I've gained an additional 40 pounds from that. So, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, um, here, I'm going to throw a picture of this beautiful picture of your wedding here, but then I'm going to switch it to a picture of you playing some chess and um, the w- one of the things that's so impressive about you and, and several other people in the dojo is they've really gone for it as adults and do seem to be making pretty solid improvement, though it's so hard to tell what it actually <laughs> is because we're not playing over the board. Yeah, exactly. But now imagine at some point in the near future we're going to be able to play again. What would you say your ambitions are going forward with chess? Uh, I definitely want to make national master. Um, and I'd like to do that relatively soon. Uh-huh. Um, I, I don't know with coronavirus when over the board play will start to come back. But once it's fully back, I'd like to say two years from when I'm able to start playing tournaments again, I'd like to make national master. Um, I hope that I have the ability to do so. Uh-huh. I've been putting in a lot of time. Um, I I feel that occasionally I play at that strength, but then I definitely don't have the consistency. Um, is the thing I've noticed the the main the main thing I've noticed um, that I'll play a game where I feel like I'm playing at around twenty two hundred strength, and then my next game I might play like a seventeen hundred. Um, so. I, I think that I really need to to continue to work, especially on end games. Uh, time management is huge. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't need to mitch it anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I, I'm working with David to cure myself of that. <laughs> Great. Nice. Um, but yeah, the ambition is national master. Um, and once I get that, we'll 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 see if uh, there's more ambition after that. So. Okay, cool. Well, let's leave it there. I think that'll be a good um, ending, and then we can kind of leave it with the question of how you do. I think, you know, 
it's kind of to think of going from 1700 to 2200 is a massive jump but i can in your case i have i believe in you i do think you can make <laughs> 2200 and who knows you know it's so so weird to you know try to get a goal um and i'll say usually it's you know just making going a couple hundred points is very difficult but i do think you can do this um how about this just in leaving tell us one thing about yourself that we wouldn't know um it's a good question i'm i'm not sure um i guess a, a little bit about um my grandpa uh -huh. might be part of that okay um, my my grandpa was a huge influence on me um and is one of the major reasons that i pursue chess um and he died when i was uh a sophomore in high school and um he left me with some really good parting wisdom that um he so he was suffering from cancer uh, he had lung cancer and um you know he was in the back room and when he was alone you could hear him uh like cry out in pain and whatnot but anytime he was around anyone else he'd be very quiet mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't show any pain right uh and uh he tried to I, I i asked him once what it was about and he said that um everyone has things that they're going through and not to to bother them with your own uh, own problems um, and I, I've tried to try to keep that in mind. I think I've gotten worse at it over time as the the memory slightly fades. But um, I, I just think that that's good good wisdom um, that has been passed down to me. I guess. Right. Um, I don't know if that qualifies as something. No, that's know. that's a good place to end on. I feel, I, and I feel like it's very true. And one of the reasons I wanted to do this series is um, one thing that's interesting to me as a chess fan when I think about people who are trying to improve and have uh, families and jobs and all these other things going on is yeah, there are struggles. There are real struggles, and then to make improvement in chess, you have to deal with all kinds of these demons that you know if you're just hanging out on the dojo we don't know about you know yeah and that's where it makes it more interesting because it fleshes out the more human story at least for me of mm -hmm. the chess journey okay mitch well hopefully we can do this again and we'll see you on the dojo all right thanks so much jesse all right thank you all right bye